What's up everybody? So in Avengers Infinity War, it's revealed that in order to acquire the Soul Stone, the Stone's Seeker must sacrifice that which he loves. Okay, cool. But there's something that bothers me about this. In Infinity War, when Thanos and Gamora arrive at Vormir and encounter the stone's keeper Red Skull, Red Skull tells them that to acquire the stone, one must pay a very high price. A price that according to Red Skull, most everyone believes they're ready to make, yet are not once they learn what the price actually is. And of course, as we all know, the price being a sacrifice of that which the stone seeker loves. Further still, Red Skull adds that the Soul Stone holds a special place among the Infinity Stones, that it has a certain knowledge to it, almost like if it's conscious. And again, as we all find out as we're watching this unfold, Thanos' prize ends up being that he's gotta sacrifice Gamora. He must sacrifice Gamora because, as he mentions in Guardians of the Galaxy, Gamora is his favorite daughter, implying that contrary to what Gamora believes, Thanos does in fact love her. So with all this in perspective, why then was Hulk and Iron Man able to wield the Soul Stone as part of the gauntlet when they each snapped? Hulk snapping to bring back all those that Thanos dusted, and then Tony using it to dust Thanos' army at the end of Endgame. Now, just in case you kind of got lost in the weeds of the details of this question, allow me to clarify. If the stone itself only allows someone who has sacrificed that which they love in order to wield it, how then and why are Hulk and Iron Man able to wield it. Remember, they are not the ones who sacrificed that which they love. In Endgame, it was Hawkeye. Hawkeye sacrificed Black Widow with whom he had a very deep and loving friendship. So going by the very logic that was set up in Infinity War when Thanos sacrificed Gamora, the only individuals that should have been able to wield the stone should have been Thanos in Infinity War and Hawkeye in Endgame. But instead, Hawkeye, who was the individual that did make the sacrifice move to attain the Soul Stone, was able to then hand it over to Hulk, then Iron Man, making the whole sacrifice move lose its significance. And so this all ends up being the case that the Soul Stone isn't very wise at all. Think about it, there it sits atop of this prominent feature on Vormir where one must climb to. Then, upon reaching the summit, they encounter this creepy, shadowy figure, and if that isn't enough to kinda scare the Seeker shitless, they then learn they must sacrifice that which they love. Sounds like some pretty epic and grand stuff, right? Well, according to Endgame, someone could just send somebody else to do the dirty work for you. In Infinity War, Thanos could have just sent Ebony Maw or Nebula or any other of his minions. It would then have to have been them to sacrifice that which they love, then simply handed it over to Thanos. So with all this in mind, while Thanos truly did deserve to wield the Soul Stone and the Gauntlet in Infinity War, neither Hulk nor Tony should have been able to in Endgame. But they did. So is this a flaw in the writing? Is maybe the Soul Stone not as wise as Red Skull made it out? to be or maybe there's something more sinister happening like maybe some of the things that we saw happen in endgame maybe didn't really even happen at all but you know what that's gonna be the topic for another video and so to be sure you're up to date with my videos make sure you like subscribe and also check out more of my videos right now